my fourth grade, we have learned that rocks are broken down by various reasons. They tumble and rub up against each other, which is called abrasion. Uh, there could be physical weathering that occurs when temperature changes and water seeps into cracks and then the ice expands and breaks them apart. And I wanna show you, Mr. Swisher helped me out because I didn't have a glass bottle with me yesterday. And so, wow, I gotta be careful. This is the glass bottle. Now I'm gonna put this underneath my camera and I wanna see if you can, I'm gonna zoom in on that top part because you could really see the cracks and the, how it just kind of exploded at the top. Um, so I'm not going to open it up because it's broken and I don't want to get cut, but you can really see how these cracks, um, because of the expanding water, which turned the ice, they broke the glass. So as this thaws, oh, there's another really good one down here. See this huge crack down here? So as this ice melts, What's going to happen is the entire bottle is gonna fall apart because the only reason it's being held together right now is because of the ice. So thank you, thank you, Mr. Swisher. That was an awesome, an awesome save for me. Okay, so now what we're gonna, we're switching gears and instead of talking about physical weathering, we're gonna talk about something called chemical weathering, chemical weathering. And I want you to get your science notebook. I want you to get a pencil, put me on pause, run and go get that and come right back. All right, open up your science notebook. We're gonna start a new investigation and I need you to take some notes because remember the beginning of all investigations start with a focus question. So our first focus question was what is soil? Our second so focus question was how do big rocks break down into smaller rocks? And our third focus question right now that we're going to do is how are rocks affected by acid rain? How are rocks affected by acid rain? So please write this in your notes. Investigation one, part three, and I've left hypothesis blank. Remember, hypothesis is your educated guess, what you think you know, you're inferencing, you're taking what you think you know about acid rain and then what you know about rocks and think about what might happen. Now, I'm going to ask you to add some vocabulary as well to your hypothesis, okay? Acid rain, some of you might be saying, Mrs. Hogue, I don't even know what you're talking about. What is acid rain? Well, it's not like when it rains, acid is pouring down on us and then like it's gonna peel our skin off. That's not what I'm talking about. Acid rain happens when sometimes substances in the air dissolve in your rain and they create a weak acid. Things that might influence this air pollution. Um, so what kinds of things cause air pollution? Well, there could be natural things like if you had a volcanic explosion that doesn't happen around us very often, but there are places where all volcano, volcanoes are constantly exploding. But something that happens a lot around us could be car exhaust. I don't know if you've ever looked up air pollution in China. Um, some of the, the images that you'll see could be quite disturbing. It's like a huge cloud of you can't even see. So car exhaust or factory smoke or even just regular burning. All right, the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is limestone, limestone. So please write down limestone. You've written down acid rain. Now I want you to write limestone. Limestone is Indiana's state rock. You live in Indiana. You should know that Indiana is known for its limestone. The kids in my class have heard me talking already about Indiana in the prehistoric times was covered in water. We were a sea. And because we were covered in a sea, Indiana formed a great deal of sedimentary rock. And believe it or not, boys and girls, sedimentary rock is um, made up of bones of fish, bones of animals, dirt, 
muck. And I'm going to show you a picture. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you what limestone actually looks like. That's an image of limestone. That's actually the state house. But all of that, um, those buildings, that is made of limestone, Indiana limestone that, was cut, that came from southern Indiana. So that is an image of what limestone looks like. Something else I want to show you is this picture. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me see again. Hold on just a second. Okay, so this is how sedimentary rock forms. So like I told you, Indiana right here was covered in water. So the plants and the animals die and they fall to the bottom because they can't, you know, they're dead. Then this is the sand. Underneath it is sand and muck and the things that kind of fall into the water. And then the weight of all this presses down, presses down, presses down, and eventually forms into rock like this. So this is the sedimentary rock that turns into limestone. Okay, so since Indiana is known for limestone, and since we have a great deal of it here, I am going to use limestone as our control. Okay, so for example, the control. What stays the same in an experiment? So in our experiment, our control is going to be the rock because we're pretending that we're a limestone building. And so the rock equals limestone. I'm not changing that around. That's my control. My variable. What is changed in the experiment? Now, I have older kids and I will tell you, as you get older, they will talk in more detail about control and variable and you'll learn a lot more. So we're just at the very basics. Um, so we're just learning about what is the control, the thing that stays the same, and what's a variable, what we change. So what we change in the experiment is going to be the liquid. If you need to, pause right now so that you can make sure you have these notes written down in your notebook. Put me on pause because I'm about to go ahead with the experiment and I want to make sure that you can pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay, I hope you got all those notes written down. What I'd like to do now is talk to you about what we're going to do to try to simulate acid rain. Now, originally I had thought, man, it would be cool if I could have them go and like look and see in their kitchen or at home what they think might, um, might represent acid rain. But I thought, you know what, that could be dangerous. So I decided, no, we're not going to do that. So I have some liquids here and we're going to see what might happen. So the first thing I want to show you is I have rocks of limestone. So these are little um, little pieces. They're, they're not too big. And they're, this is what limestone looks like. Oh, I'll put it, hold on. So limestone. It's not, it, I mean, it doesn't look really pretty when it's like this in this form. Sometimes though, you can even find fossils in it, which is super cool. And that's when I get excited. And pieces of shell and all kinds of random things. Okay, so since this is limestone and you know that this is the control, I'm not changing the rock that we use. I'm just using limestone. So I'm gonna go ahead and put rock, the limestone in here. I'm gonna put the limestone in here. I'm gonna put limestone in here. And if you notice, they're all pretty similar in size as well. Okay, so that's the first one. Okay, so the next thing is the acid rain. Okay, so when I think of rain, I think of water. When I think of rain, I think of water. So what better to use than a bottle of Kroger water? All right, so I'm gonna take my test tube and I'm gonna pour some water in here. Now, if it's raining, it's not going to really like sit in water like this, but I don't have, I don't have the um, equipment to simulate rain <laughs> all day long. So we're just going to let this soak in water and see what happens. Okay, so another thing. All right, we got water. So now I'm trying to think of something that might be like acidy or I don't know. So my class knows I like LaCroix. 
I drink it every day. I'm always having it around here. So I thought, you know what? It's bubbly. It's, it's sparkling. Maybe it'll do something to it. So I'm looking on it. It doesn't say anything about like what's in it. Doesn't say anything about what's in it. So I don't really know. And I drink it every day. So I'm going to open this up. And then here's my next one. Oh, 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 don't overflow. I just kind of got it on the carpet. See why? If you if you try to practice something with acid rain, you could, oh, I'll, I'll post a fun acid rain activity you guys could do that's safe, but get permission first, okay? Because I don't want you guys to make a mess at home or um, have an accident that could hurt you. That's not okay. All right, so look at how, look at, do you see the bubbles on that? Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, and so now, my last one is gonna be vinegar. Now, my kids think of vinegar, if we dye Easter eggs, you have to use vinegar in the cup to make the, I can't get this top off, um, to make the dye work, or some of, my, some of my salad dressings have vinegar in it. Um, okay, so here's my last one. And I'm, you've got to make sure you're filling them up the same. Do you see how these are, these are, these are this, like about an inch and a half? Okay. So last but not least, I'm going to pour some vinegar in it. Oh, this does smell like salad. Okay, so now we have vinegar. Oh, I see things happening to this one already. Oh. If you look really carefully, can you see that there's like a cloud flume going up? Can you, uh, I'll try to be still. Do you see that it looks like it's already coming off of it? This might be our winner. This might be the winner. I'm gonna hold real still. Can you see in the video what's happening to the rock? Maybe even pause it. Okay, so now boys and girls, I'm gonna have this sit. I'm gonna have this sit overnight um, and then I'll come back to it um, and we'll let you see which one had the most effect on the limestone. All right.